architecture is making sense of life through making somewhere to live and occupy. I think architecture is about creating an environment that can respond to the natural environment but can respond to how we as people want to live. Um, for me, architecture isn't anything unless there is something about a contact with the natural world, whether it's actually a relationship with light or its relationship with greenery or its relationship with water. It is not just bricks and mortar. It's got to have spirit and life. The role of architects in contemporary society is on the one hand to serve the community and actually shape our cities, our buildings, our places we live, work in a way that is consistent with what the sort of our fellow people want. So we almost take it, we take a brief from the rest of the world and we deliver that brief in the best way we can. At the same time, obviously, I think, you know, architects by and large are creative thinkers and I think we were always thinking about the future and what's the, what's the relationship with issues going on in the world, climate change, economics. So I think there's also a prompt. We need to sort of prompt back to the, the world at large. You know, what, what are the issues that you should be putting into your brief? What are the things that we should be taking account of? So I think we can, we can provoke and uh, generate interest in, in those sort of issues as well. Innovation is like the starting point of, of that whole practice. Um, at one level, you want to have a point of difference. How do you differentiate yourself from your competitors, what other people are doing? And I think one of the things that we've found is actually let's, let's challenge uh, conventions, let's look at different ideas, different sort of technologies, different ways of thinking, different ways of building teams. Um, so having that sort of frame of mind is, is something that we've been thinking about fundamentally right from the start. But it's not innovation for innovation's sake. I mean, I think it's really important to, to sort of be appropriate. I mean, that's the other side of our work as landscape architects is, you know, you, you deliver something that's appropriate to the site. And perhaps more so than architects, we're attuned to thinking about what is the ecological, natural, landscape, geological context of a, of a place and, and trying to make it fit uh, in its best possible way. And sometimes that means doing something that's been done for forever, rather than trying to innovate. The internet has become, has become a sort of fundamental tool of, of how we work. Operating in different time zones, different parts of the world, means you've got to transfer huge amounts of information from one part of the world to the other in clever ways. Um, you need to communicate through you know, video conferencing, web-based conferencing, you know, this is all part of the day-to-day -day living. You know, five years ago, it wouldn't have been on the agenda, really. Uh, even in our practice, even though we're working here in Singapore, um, it was still relatively sort of clunky ways of, of getting across communication information across the globe. For us, as landscape architects, we're always traditionally been part of a team, but actually way down at the sort of pecking order. You know, so the traditional hierarchy of a project is, you know, you have your architects, engineers, quantity surveyors, um, and then somewhere, somewhere way down the bottom is a landscape architect and, and maybe, you know, the, comes alongside the health and safety people. <laughs> and we need, you know, we, we, one of the key things for me has been to build relationships with the architects, with the engineers, to demonstrate that we can actually work and operate at the same level as them, we can think and contribute to, to solutions. In fact, you know, when I studied landscape architecture, um, our tutor at Edinburgh was basically saying, look, if you want to get on and do well, 
you've got to think like an engineer, you've got to think like an architect, you've got to think like a quantity surveyor, you've got to be able to communicate in all those ways. And I think what I've learned since then is actually it's not just those, you've got to be able to communicate with your clients, you've got to be able to communicate with uh, the, the stakeholders, and that might be just somebody off the street in a, in a, uh, a community meeting of you know, really intense sort of passion about a particular place. It might be an exhibition designer or a branding designer or a um, media consultant. I mean, it's communication and networking are key to how we all work, I think, and increasingly so. I think if you want to study architecture, and this is me talking from a landscape architect's perspective, architects need to look at how people use streets and parks and spaces. Forget the buildings. People engage socially in, 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 in a lot of ways in, in the outdoor spaces, and I think architects, although they talk a lot about the public realm and public space being fundamental, many, many architects cannot even deliver on that. They just sort of, it's words. So look and observe and see how people work. I think parallel to that, look at the natural world. Look at how ecological systems work. Look at how um, things that have lasted for millions of years and we've evolved in appropriate ways to, to different challenges. Look at that. Learn from nature. Um, and I think those two things, I think, are the, the starting point for an architect. We started Grant Associates in 1996. I worked, I set up from my home. I worked from my dining room table. I, my home transformed in the, at night time into a family environment with small children, wife, TV, all that sort of thing. And then during the day, it was this sort of weird drawing board environment and pen, paper and pencil, pencils. Um, but from the start, I mean, I had an idea that what I wanted to do. One is that I wanted to sort of set up my practice based around a very clear idea about this is landscape architecture that is looking at sustainable development and you know the creative evolution of landscape. What is it that sustainability means to the next era of landscape. So there was a sort of an idea there. I also thought it was really important to, to work with the best architects, the best engineers, and the best clients. So I made a lot of sort of uh, contacts uh, with people like Richard Rogers, Phil Clay Bradley, Will Olsop. I mean, there's a really interesting group of people that, that gave me a sort of a leg up. And, and I learned by accident, I guess, that through that, by working with these people, they get the best jobs, they get the best fees, they get the, you know, things start to work. And you can start to, to build your practice around a strong philosophy and a clear idea about um, making a profit and a clear idea about making good connections and keeping them.